Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about remote control software. So you could use this type of software to remotely connect to other computers, either on the same network or over the internet, depending on what you're using. All right, so we're going to show you a couple examples that come with Windows, but there are plenty of other third-party software programs you could use. One of the more popular ones is TeamViewer, and that allows you to connect to other computers via the internet and take control of them. All right, so you might have heard of remote desktop. So that is used in Windows to remotely control other computers. So this can be done over the internet if you have a VPN connection going, but otherwise it's pretty much just used for controlling other computers on the same network. So one catch with remote desktop is that you cannot remotely control a Windows home based computer, but you can for Windows Pro. So if you go to the remote desktop settings in a Windows 11 home computer like this one here, You'll see Home Edition does not support remote desktop, but a Windows Home computer can connect to a Windows Pro computer and control it that way. All right, so now we're going to go over to a Windows 11 Pro computer and show you the same settings. All right, so we're over on Windows 11 Pro with the red desktop, so keep that in mind so you don't get confused which one is which. So Pro is red, Home is blue. So let's go to the settings here. System. Remote desktop. All right, so you can see remote desktop is on. And then you could have the option here to require devices to use network level authentication to connect, and that's recommended. And here's the remote desktop port. That's the default port. So if you're having problems connecting, so if you're thinking maybe it's some type of authentication or permission issue, you could try unchecking this if it's on a trusted network. Okay, so here's the PC name, Win11 Pro. So you can find it here. You can also find it here on the main system area, right here at the top. And also from a command prompt, if you type in host name, it tells you it right there. Okay, and so remote desktop users. So once you have it enabled, you have to allow specific users. So if you click on this box here, so right now everyone has permission, which is not the best way to go, but I just did that just for demonstration purposes, and you could add other users as well. So just keep in mind if this is just a work group and not a domain, uh, you'll have to have that user information on this computer to be able to allow them to connect. So that's where it can get a little tricky when you're just using a work group with local users or Microsoft accounts. Uh, it could get a little tricky with user accounts and names and passwords. All right, and then also, if for some reason you cannot connect using the host name, you could do it by IP address. So if you go to a command prompt once again, type in IP config, you'll see this is the IP address. So if the host name doesn't work, you could try this, and you'll probably have a better chance of connecting if that's the case. All right, so let's go back to the Windows 11 home computer. So minimize this stuff here, and then connect to the Windows 11 Pro computer with the red. All right, so we're back on the Windows 11 home computer. So we're going to just do a search for remote desktop here. So we want the remote desktop connection app. And you can see here I've already used the IP address to connect to it. So I know that works. Now I'm going to try the host name, Win11 Pro. And another little test you could do from a command prompt if it's not working. You could see if you could ping the host name. So ping. Win 11 Pro. All right, so I'm able to ping it, which means there's connectivity, and then there's an the IP address, and then you could also ping the IP address to make sure that's working. All right, so now that I have the name in here, we have some options. So you could put in the username before connecting so you don't have to type it in. So if you want to save this connection on your desktop, you could do that. So if you make a bunch of custom changes here, you can save the connection name and then just double click it from there. All right, we have display settings for quality, local resources. If you want to have sound go through the remote desktop connection, and if you want to be able to use the printer for the remote session, you can do that. And same for items that are copies of the clipboard. And then you have some other options here if you click on more. All right, then we have the experience. So by default, it'll detect the connection quality automatically. 
and we could pick one of these two, but this is usually fine. And we have some advanced settings here about server authentication and so on. All right, so let's go ahead and just connect as is here. Okay, so now it's using the name that we're logged in as because we're logged in as Todd Sims here. But if you didn't want to use that account on the remote computer, you could click on More Choices and use a different account. But we're going to use the Todd Sims account because we have a matching account on the other computer. All right, so now we'll enter the password for Todd Sims here. And you can see it's using a Microsoft account. And here's the Microsoft account email address associated with it. And of course, you could use a local account if you have one of those set up as well. All right, so click on OK. Now you're going to get this message about a certificate can't be verified. This will happen every time. And then you can check this box if you don't want to see it, or just click on yes. All right, so now it's logging in as Todd. And here's the red desktop that goes along with it. So now we're able to control this computer over the network. If there's somebody else on the other computer, they're just going to see a login prompt. They're not going to see what you're doing. So that's one of the things that's a little different about remote desktop. It doesn't let the other person see what you're doing. So if I go over to the Windows 11 Pro computer that we're connecting to, here's what you'll see. So if there was somebody sitting on that remote computer, this is what they would see. And if they have the credentials here, they could log in and kick you off. All right, let's go back to the Windows 11 home computer. And you can see we have some tools up here to pin it, connection information. You can minimize the screen here and go back to our local desktop and then just put it up here. We want to connect back in and keep working. Then you can make the screen smaller if you want to kind of have your own little window here. So now you can see we have both going. And then of course you can just click on the X here and then disconnect. And then the other person will be able to log back in. All right, so that is remote desktop. So now if you want to use another tool to help people out where they can actually see what you're doing, we're going to use something called Quick Assist. So this is another Microsoft tool. And this can be used over the internet as well with no special VPNs or anything configured in your router and that type of thing. All right, so we're going to do a search for Quick Assist. Quick Assist. All right, so it's going to use a Microsoft account to connect. So if you're not logged in, it'll ask you to log in. All right, so now there's the Get Help option, and then there's the Help Someone option. So we're now going to help the person on the Windows 11 Pro computer by clicking Help Someone. See how it wants you to sign in here. So I'm going to sign in. All right, so here's the code that the other person's going to use right here. Okay. All right, so now we're going to go over to the Windows 11 Pro computer. Got to log back in since we were logged out from remote desktop. All right, so now we're going to open Quick Assist here. All right, so now we're going to enter the code that was from the other computer. So obviously you'll need to call them or send them a message or something so they have a way to get the code. Click on Submit. Okay, so now let's go back to the Windows 11 home computer. Okay, you can see it says waiting for the other person to accept your request. So let's go back to Pro again. I know it's a lot of back and forth, so hopefully it's not getting too confusing. All right, so we're going to click the box here. I understand the security implications of screen sharing and click on Allow. All right, so now our screen is being shared with the Windows 11 home computer. So let's go back over there. All right, so now you can see we're on the Windows 11 home computer here in blue, and we have our quick assist window open. So now we can request control. And now we have to go back to the Windows 11 Pro computer and accept it. All right, so Todd is requesting control. We'll allow it. So now Todd has control. So once again, go back over to the Windows 11 home computer, the one who's doing the controlling. 
And you can see we could cancel it as well or pause it or leave the session and kick them off. All right, so now I have control of that computer. Let me see if I could shrink it down to fit on the screen here. All right, so you've got a little stretched out. So now you can see I'm using the computer over there. And of course, you'd want to make it full screen so things look a little more clear. Then you have some tools up here, laser pointer, annotation. You could do a chat if you're not on the phone. You know, this will come in handy. Uh, select the screen, actual size. I think that's to refresh or reload. Restart, reconnect, pause, and task manager. So this will actually open task manager on the other computer. So if you're having a problem, it's an easy way to open it. And then I could stop control and then also leave. So when I'm done, I just click on leave. Screen sharing has ended. All right, so those are your two ways to remotely control other computers. So if you use remote desktop, like I said, it's pretty much used over the network, not the internet, unless you have some type of VPN connection. And remote desktop seems to be a little better when it comes to performance and how things look. But if you just need something quick and simple, you could use the Quick Assist. And one thing I will say about Quick Assist, many times it will not connect. It will just sit there spinning. So don't think it's you or your computer. It's actually Quick Assist. All right, so hopefully that helps you out, and then you could get connected to other computers. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe. Thank mm -hmm. you.